Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about the Hebrew months. And I believe by the end of this video, you're going to be pleasantly surprised to find what the Hebrew months actually are. Now, we're looking here at revision 5.1 of the celestial clock calendar. And you notice that it has the Gregorian months on it. But I have a few problems with the Gregorian months being on the celestial clock calendar. Of course, this is a perpetual calendar that will tell us the days, the months, and the seasons of our Father's sacred calendar, what many people call the Enoch calendar. But the thing about the Gregorian calendar is it's actually a little bit dysfunctional and cannot be really considered a perpetual calendar, mainly because the days on the Gregorian calendar actually drift over time. In fact, one of the reasons why we came up with this revision, 5.1, was because the equinoxes no longer fall on March the 20th, but are now falling on March the 18th, getting closer to March the 17th. It already needs to be updated to give us the correct dates for the equinoxes and the solstices. But there's other problems with the Gregorian calendar as well. For instance, how the month of March is around the time of the beginning of spring here in the northern hemisphere is actually the beginning of fall in the southern hemisphere and that's what got us looking into this next revision how can we make this clock universal for anybody in the world i mean we are expecting a pole shift here any day now and from what i understand there's no guarantees that where we live now will be in the same hemisphere once the poles shift. Sure, it's a shift in the electromagnetic field, but there's certain verses in the Bible says that the stars are going to be rearranged. In other words, they're going to be in different places after the pole shift. And add that to the fact that most of the names of the months on the Gregorian calendar point to the pagan gods. Well, in this video, we're going to talk about exactly what's supposed to be there what the Enoch months looked like coming from the book called Second Enoch or The Secrets of Enoch and we're going to get a better understanding of how our sacred calendar actually works. The first verses we're going to look at is coming from Second Enoch and notice I said Second Enoch. Most of the time when we talk about the calendar it's coming from First Enoch but down here in chapter 16 we actually learn how the sacred months work. Let me read verse one. It says, those men showed me the other course, that of the moon, 12 great gates crowned from west to east by which the moon goes in and out of the customary times. Now it was chapter 15 that was talking about the sun and giving us information about the sun. But notice that there's no mention of the months there as it's talking about the sun. And this is the biggest problem with the people who are celebrating the holy feast days in the wrong months. Those who every year try to tell us that we are celebrating Passover a month too early. There's even some now in November that are celebrating tabernacles. It's because they're assigning too much authority to the sun. You see here in Second Enoch where it's talking all about the sun. Down there in verse 3, it's talking about the gates of the sun which we read about in 1st Enoch. In fact, it's in chapter 72 of 1st Enoch that we learn all about the gates, their timing, their length, and even how to tell precisely when the solar year starts. Like for instance, down in about verse 32, we learn that the 364th day of the solar year is the day in which the nights and the days are equal. That's the day when the sun will rise at 6 p.m. Standard Time or 7 p.m. Daylight Savings Time and it will set at 7 p.m. making 12 hours for daylight and 12 hours for darkness. That's the 364th day of the year, which makes the first day of the solar year around March the 18th. But that's talking about the gates. And that chapter doesn't talk about months at all. Just like back over here in chapter 15 of Enoch 2, the chapter on the sun doesn't mention the months. But looking back at chapter 16, 
we see in verse 2 that it's going to describe the months in great detail. So going forward, we need to understand that it is the moon that determine the months, not the sun. In fact, that's where the word month comes from. Like we learned back there in grammar school, the original word was month. We only now call it a month. But anyway, let's come back over and let's look at what Enoch says about the months here in verse 2. Now, I'm not going to read all of these, but it says, It goes in at the first gate to the western places of the sun, by the first gates with 31 days exactly, by the second gates with 31 days exactly, by the third with 30 days exactly, so forth and so on telling us the days of each and every month of the year, or I should say, each and every month of the year, because these days don't quite match up with the days of the months of the year. Let me show you what I mean. We're looking over here at a spreadsheet table that I put together that gives us the dates of the months as described by Enoch. They're actually a little bit out of order because as I included the number of days in the months, I actually ordered them according to the Gregorian calendar. So you have January there with 31 days, followed by February with 28 days, and March with 31 days. But notice how closely they aligned with Enoch. Now this is actually what brought me back to second Enoch, because as I was looking through trying to find out where did we get the original information about the days of the months, nobody seems to know. They point back to the Egyptians, but where did they get the idea from? Was it from Joseph, who saved that nation and the entire world from a famine? Probably so, because he already had the information from the book of Enoch and knew how many days there were in each month from chapter 16. And when you look closely, you see that there's only a slight difference in what the so-called Egyptians came up with and what Enoch said the months were. Eight of the months and months line up perfectly. Only four seem to be a little bit misaligned. Where Enoch said that the month had 31 days, while the Egyptians said that the month had 30 days, and vice versa. But when we come back over and plot that out over on the celestial clock calendar, look at how it almost appears to be intentional. If we rotate this a little bit and circle the four months that they got wrong, notice their position on the celestial calendar. That's got me looking to see if there is actually any history of an April 31st or a November 31st. But anyway, coming back over here to look at chapter 16 in Enoch 2 once again, we see how precise Enoch was in his understanding of the celestials and how they work. He even talks about a 365 and a quarter days. How many years did it take us to figure that out? It's probably because we were trying to do so without the scripture that tells us how it works. It even talks about the leap year and the leap day down in verse 5, where it says that this quarter of a day is left out for three years and then fulfilled in the fourth year exactly. And I remind you that Enoch was the first author on the planet. And he was taught this information directly from the Elohim. It even mentions the so-called Metonic cycle down there in verse 8. Talking about how the position of the moon repeats itself in relationship to the position of the sun and the stars. So again, there is the problem. Many of us who are trying to figure out how the sun, the moon, and the stars are supposed to regulate our days, months, and seasons... We're assigning the months to the sun instead of the moon from which they come. So there arises a problem. When we're trying to come up with the final draft of the celestial clock calendar, what's supposed to be here? Instead of September, October, November, and December, which will change their position over the course of time, and if you move to a different hemisphere, what's actually supposed to be there? Let's look once again over at chapter 16, back in verse 1, because I believe Enoch gave us a hint when he said that the 12 great gates 
crowned from west to east. Notice that word crowned there. That's another name for the Maseroth, which we hear about over in Job chapter 38, verse 32. This is talking about the constellations. So what Enoch was telling us was that our moons are determined by the constellations. In fact, when we come over to the book of Josephus in the Antiquities of the Jews, book three, chapter 10, verse five says, in the month Xanthicus, which is by us called Nisan, and is the beginning of our year, on the 14th day of the lunar month, when the sun is in Aries, the law ordained that we should every year slay that sacrifice, which I before told you we slew when we came out of Egypt, and which was called the Passover. So here he's given a lot of information about the moose, a couple of different names, but notice how he tells us that this is the beginning of the year when the sun is in Aries. And usually when those people come and try to tell us that our months are wrong and that we're celebrating them a month too early, this is what they reference. Josephus is saying clearly that the Passover day is on the 14th day of the month in which the sun is in Aries. The confusion with those guys comes from the fact that they're using the sidereal dates of the Maseroth instead of the tropical dates. I had to look this up myself and turns out the tropical dates are what actually determine the seasons. And if you're wondering why this tropical date doesn't match up perfectly with what we saw back over at timeanddate.com saying that the first day of the year was March the 18th, while here we see it saying March the 21st, it's because of the drift in the man-made calendar. The same reason why Pope Gregory back in 1582 had to take 10 days off of the calendar. He did so because the calendar had drifted by 10 days since 325 AD. Well, if you do the math on that, it's easy to see that our calendar has drifted three days since 1582, pushing the equinox back to March the 18th. But we covered that in a previous video. For the 99% of us who celebrate the Passover in April are going by these tropical dates, but that other small group who celebrate first Passover in May, they're using the sidereal date. That's why there are some people who are celebrating tabernacles even today in the middle of November. They're using the sidereal date opposed to the tropical date. And you say, what's the difference? The tropical date is what we are supposed to be going by. But if you're actually able to look past the sun at any particular time, you'll notice that it matches up more closely with the sidereal date. In other words, on April the 2nd in the year 2022, when the rest of us declared the new year had started and that Passover would be 14 days away, those using the sidereal system would have looked at the sun and said, no, it's not in Aries, but is in fact in Pisces. But notice a big problem with that is that they actually looked through the sun. In other words, they would have looked at the actual position of the sun in the sky relative to the constellation which was behind it, which was in fact Pisces. The problem with that is that the sun is too bright to actually see the stars in the daylight. So therein comes the computers, like Stellarium, where they're able to dim the light of the sun and get the names of the constellations that they're actually in. That's the sidereal system. But Enoch didn't have any computers. Moses didn't have any computers, nor did our Messiah have any computers, nor did they have telescopes, which wasn't invented until 1608. So yes, it's true. The sun's actual position and the Maseroth on April the 2nd was in Pisces, but that's not how they did it. They didn't use computers and they didn't use telescopes. What they used was the moon. You see back over here in chapter 16, these crowns or the Maseroth is associated with the moon, not the sun. Again, that's the problem with these guys. 
Maybe you should tell them to come and check out this video. I'm sure a few of them will actually like to get it right. There may be some that are trying to steer you astray. But after getting this understanding, you'll be able to tell if they don't recant and or start telling you the correct days for the festival days going forward. In other words, if after hearing this information and getting this understanding, making this correction, they still come back and tell you the wrong date, you know that they're actually trying to hinder your progress. They're trying to steal your blessings from you and turn you into a heathen by making you miss every single feast day of the year by using a system that didn't even exist when the text was written. Again, these guys are putting too much on the sun. It's not the sun's responsibility to set the months. It is the moon's responsibility to set the moons. And one way you can know for sure, one way you can prove it is the festival of Hanukkah, which came into effect after Antiochus Epiphanes roasting of a pig on Christmas Day, which lined up with the 25th day of the ninth month. Well, ask them when Hanukkah is this year. If their calculation ends somewhere in January, you know that they're using the sidereal system and they're simply not doing it right. We're supposed to be using the tropical system and the way it works Praise our Father in heaven for these revelations because it's the moon in these particular crowns that determines the moons. What they would do is right after the sun went down and the new moon appeared, being that the sky was then dark, they was able to look at the moon's position on the ecliptic and see that it was actually in Aries. Sure, the sun was in Pisces, but who cares? It's the moon that determines the moon. And you can't see the stars when the sun is up anyway. They would have had to wait it till it was dark. So precisely at the new moon date, right after the convergence of the sun and the moon, they would have simply looked past the moon to see which constellation it was in. And it was in fact in Aries on April the 2nd in the year 2022. And that's how it works. So our months are actually lining up with the Maseroth. That's how the stars are used to determine our seasons. For those of us who can pick out the constellations, all we have to do is look at what constellation the new moon is in when it appears. And that's how the celestial clock calendar works. No matter which hemisphere you're in or no matter where you're at on the earth, the year begins when... The new moon appears in Aries because of their recent convergence. You know that since the moon is appearing in Aries, the sun is also in Aries. And just like Josephus said, on the 14th day of that same month will be the feast of Passover. So now we're on the way to the solution to our problem. The original question, what names are supposed to be here? Instead of the names of the Gregorian months, the names that are supposed to be there are associated with the constellations. But what's up with this name Aries? When we look it up, it says that that's the name for the word Ram in Latin. But there are other places that says that these names, like Virgo and Scorpio, are associated with the names of Greek deities as well. So should we include these on the celestial clock calendar? Or should we use the English translation or the Hebrew translation for what represents the star constellations? And instead of saying Taurus, we just put the name bull there. Or should we use the Jewish names, which I don't like so much because many of them are not found in the Bible and they don't give us the information we need about the constellations. So for Rev 6 of the Celestial Clock Calendar, which will be all about the holy days. I think we're going to go with the Hebrew calendar names found in the Bible. Maybe a combination of the Hebrew words, the English pronunciation, and the English names of the star constellations. We'll have to figure out the proper name for the fourth month because it's not listed in the Bible. And the one that's commonly used is definitely 
not going to work. But y'all tell me what you think. We're planning on having that revision done by Hanukkah. So if you have any input, it will be much appreciated. But in the meantime, consider sharing this video with those guys who are telling you that we're in Tabernacles here in November or that we're in first Passover in May or that Pentecost is in July or something like that. This is really serious that so many people are listening to those guys and are celebrating their feast days in the wrong month. And hopefully by watching this video and putting their computers down and looking with their own eyes, they will see the true crowns of the Maseroth, just as Enoch described them. Now, if you got anything out of this video, please hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. But leave me a comment either way. And... Shalom.